If you're hitting your sterling irons reasonably well uh, from a consistency standpoint for distance, but you're struggling a little bit with accuracy, hitting a little bit left, hitting a little bit right, um, I've got some three things here that can uh, hopefully help you with that. So the first thing is uh, it's important to check the angle uh, on, your, on your irons. Maybe it's just one iron or two irons that you're hitting two of them left and then the others are okay. So one of the first things you should do is check that lie angle. And the lie angle is this angle from the sh shaft to the hosel to the bottom of the club here. And that's super important from a club fitting standpoint. I think it's one of the more important ones. Is that if you put this little lie angle tool on here, magnetic tool, or the uh, club face tool, if you come into the ball, normally, if the club face is grounding or, or coming through roughly squarely, the club face is going to be pointing where, you, where you'd expect it to go at impact. But if you come through a little bit upright, the club face may appear to be still, to be still square at impact here. However, if it's upright, It'll actually, the shot will actually be going to the left for a right-hander. And then on the other side, if it's coming through a little bit too flat, club face might look square, but it's actually pointing out to the right. So lie angle is something that's really important that you should definitely check with your sterling irons uh, to, if you're struggling a little bit with accuracy. And that's one of the reasons why we fit for those and why we ask it for the, on the fitting form on the website is uh, because it's such a fit, an important fitting element. It's really, and it's one of the reasons I think why, uh, one of the many reasons why I think that the sterling irons outperform uh, irons that are just bought off the rack where you're just chancing whether or not the line angle is going to actually fit you. So how you can check that <clears throat> is get a ball and then with a dry eraser marker, not a permanent marker, Draw a line on the ball. Um, this one has a little line on it already, but so maybe draw a line over that. And then line up that line, set it on the ground where it's vertical, and then hit a ball with it. And when you, when you come in and you hit a ball with it and the ball flies away, you'll see there'll be an imprint left on the club face here. So ideally, if this club is coming through straight, this ball, uh, this line is going to be um, basically straight up and down. But if the club is a little bit upright, then the line will point out more towards the toe. If the club is a little bit flat, then the, the line will point a little bit in more towards the, towards the shaft. And that's something that's super easy to fix. Uh, you just take it to a club fitter and have them literally have them bend it. We designed the sterling irons with a soft enough metal that uh, you can uh, you, you can uh, have a club fitter use their little crowbar tool and bend it. And it's really amazing what just a simple lie angle adjustment can do to the shot shape, and you don't have to fight the club anymore. So definitely the, uh, check the lie angle again. The, the lie angle should be really, really close or really, really good for you because that's one of the things we do with our fitting, but something to rule out if you're struggling with accuracy. If the lie angle is good, the next thing to check, second thing to check, would be to check where you're contacting on the face. So what you can do is you can get a can of uh, Dr. Scholl's Odor X foot powder spray or something similar any kind of foot powder spray, chalk, uh, chalk spray that kids use. Spray a little bit on the club face, wipes off easily with a towel. And then when you hit balls, it leaves uh, ball marks all around the club face. And ideally, we designed the, uh, the sweet spot on the sterling irons to be right in the center of the club face. Um, so not a little bit more towards the, the heel or towards the toe, right in the center there. So uh, you want to check your strike pattern. If you're hitting all over the face, 
then that could definitely be a reason that's causing you to have some accuracy issues. Um, generally speaking, I won't get into it in this particular video, but uh, due to um, gear effect, mostly you think of horizontal gear effect with drivers and woods and, and hybrids, but it, it does come into play a little bit on irons as well. Not quite as much because the center of gravity is a little bit more towards the, the actual club face versus with a driver you're moving the, club, the, center, uh, the center of gravity back. So generally speaking, if you hit it in the center, uh, the ball should go where you're uh, in the, start in the direction you want here. And if it's more towards the toe, it's going to cause uh, leftward for a right-hander. It's going to cause leftward shots. And if you hit more towards the heel, it's going to cause more rightward shots. So that's something that you can definitely work on at the, at the driving range. Um, I've done that. I've taken out a, an 8-iron, for example, and I pick out a target, and then um, I spray the, the club face here, hit a few balls, or hit a ball, and then all of a sudden uh, the ball goes left, um, and then I felt like my swing was okay, but then I noticed that the, the, the contact was a little bit out on the toe, and I'm like, oh, okay. I don't really need to change anything with my swing. The lie angle I know is good. Um, let me just make another swing and move my contact point more towards the middle. And then lo and behold, the next one you uh, get a center strike. The ball goes where you expect it and not you know, to one side or the other and voila. So working with a can of this uh, foot powder spray, it's, it's, you know, it only costs a couple bucks, but it's a super valuable tool that you can use to kind of really dial in, uh, dial in your contact. So that's going to really help your accuracy as well, is improving your, the, your consistency of your contact. And you see that uh, with, there's a correlation of that. As you go from high handicappers, generally speaking, they're, and beginners are hitting all over the face. To mid handicappers, they're a little bit better. To scratch players, they're a little bit better. To tour players, they're even tighter. So, strike consistency of strike is something that you can uh, definitely check and work on and improve if you're looking to uh, improve the accuracy with your short yards. And then the last thing um, so, th the first thing was an equipment thing. The second thing was a, a contact point, so not so technical. And then this last thing will be more of a technical uh, swing change, if you want to call it. So generally speaking, our golf instruction world has us start out with a club face square, and then we take it back, and then we open the face with the toe up in the backswing, bring it back squared up and impact, roll it back over, and then roll over to the toe over, toe up in the through swing. And when you look with this little tool, what happens when you're doing that, the club face just goes all over the place. So that, from a technical standpoint, is something that could definitely uh, um, be an issue with your accuracy. I remember when I was 27 and I was a 14 handicapper um, before I turned pro. One of the things that helped get my handicap down from 14 to 10 to 5 to scratch to plus handicap to uh, professional uh, le uh, playing level was minimizing the amount of club face rotation through impact here. So I, 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 I remember thinking about that too when I was first on the driving range starting on this little golf journey. I, I kept re I was thinking like, gosh, why do they want me to open it and then close it? It's just so much harder. Then I'd, I'd just try and hit it with a little bit more of a square uh, face to path is what they call it. And then uh, lo and behold, when I started working with 
my first instructor, Dan Chogger and Mike Austin, they also taught me to do that too. They're like, keep the cold face more square down through here. And wouldn't you know it, of course you don't hit it perfect still, but my dispersion went from like this to like this. So that means of course that you're gonna be hitting more greens. The greens that you do hit, they're, they're, uh, the ball's gonna be closer. You're gonna have more birdie opportunities, more pars, less bogeys, you know, you get the idea. So from a technical standpoint, and don't overthink how you have to do it. Just uh, look at the club face and see what your body does to have to keep it square to the swing path, relatively square. And that doesn't mean you have to have it be square 100% of the way around the swing. Most importantly, I think, is just down through here. Um, a lot of times when you're looking at uh, uh, even tour players, the, the ones that are most consistently week to week, year to year, more accurate are, are, I think, in my observation, are ones that aren't rotating the club face like this all over the place. It's just, it, it, it adds an additional complexity um, to the game that I just, uh, I think it's kind of silly personally. But So if you're looking for more accuracy, it's definitely something you want to look at or consider. So those are the three things uh, to help you with more accurate direction with your sterling irons. Um, to recap, um, check your lie angles, uh, make sure those are good. Uh, they should be with your sterling irons, but um, you know if there's one or two clubs that are little outliers, you might check those because sometimes they can get banged, the clubs can get banged around in the trunk or whatever. So check, make sure it's not the lie angle. Rule that out. Check your contact with some foot powder spray, some kind of spray and really dial in your contact, practice on that on the driving range. And then watch the amount of club face rotation. Try to swing down through here with a face, club face that's a little bit more square to path, a more zeroed um, face to path angle. And hopefully uh, those three things, if you put all those together, that's really gonna uh, help you with your accuracy. You know, again, it's not going to be perfect necessarily, but maybe bring it from like this to something like this, or even this, um, an improvement nonetheless. So give those things a try, and uh, hopefully you'll be hitting some more accurate shots.